What do you think, Brusco? What a knucklehead, huh? What's up guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name's Matt. That guy over there is Meatball. And the other one running around here is Roscoe. Anyways, today's project we're going to be uh, working on the dump truck. So for those of you who may have never seen it before, this is my international 10 ton dump truck. It's a 4900 model with a DT 466 and an Allison, or not Allison, excuse me, Eaton 10 speed Road Ranger. I can't talk today. I'm tongue tied. So anyway, it's a good truck, really like it, it's in good shape, but it's got an issue here that I've been neglecting for quite some time because I didn't want to have the downtime, and that is the hoist cylinder is leaking quite a bit. So I put that tray under there two days ago after I last ran it, and that's how much it's leaked out in two days. So not only does that uh, get awful bad for the ground, that gets awful bad on the pocketbook, burning through hydraulic fluid like that so while it does do a great job of rust proofing our frame and all the other components down there we're gonna go ahead and rip that cylinder out of there today so i can tear it apart and get that thing repacked because uh yeah reasons Check this thing out too guys i had this custom license plate made up the other day i thought it turned out really good let me know down in the comments if uh, any of you guys would be interested in buying one of those All right, so we have the bed up in the air here. I have the bed prop up, so none of you guys can yell at me that I'm gonna get crushed, because I know everybody loves to yell at me. Um, and I'm thinking the way that we're gonna do this is somehow fix a chain to these pillars and then use binders and tie it back to the frame or the bed or something. And pulling these inward will lift the bed a little bit higher and that'll get it out of my way, first of all. Second of all, I can uh, unhook the cylinder, suck it back in, and yeah, remove it from the vehicle. That seems like it worked out really good. I got uh, that chain run down over, hooked onto the D-ring on the hitch plate, and that binder was easily making the bed move. So I guess we should be good. I should have all the tension off of this thing. Yep, that tells me I do. Let's go ahead and try to knock that, knock that pin out of there. And then I guess we'll try to suck it back together. Well, check out how stupid this is. That pin, cannot be driven out it's welded in there both sides welded in there it is non removable I guess what you have to do is take this bolt out of the ram here and in the up position you can't get the bolt out it's gonna go 
about an eighth of an inch and hit that so that's very disappointing I guess what I'm gonna end up doing here the lower pin is removable because God something has to be <clears throat> so I guess I'll knock that pin out and then end up lifting the rear of the cylinder up with a forklift and then removing that front bolt uh, I've been really happy with this dump body over the years this is a god one I think it's rated at six or seven yards but it's a nice box it's well built I like it that irritates me because that is not serviceable Okay, there Ooh, and the pins just moving too maybe this project won't turn out so bad speak too soon but that was uh that was probably one of the easiest pins i've ever had to remove that was nice i guess now we can go ahead and lift up our cylinders some more and disconnect the lines all right before we can go ahead and lift our cylinder out of here we have the pressure line coming in the bottom here so we need to crank that guy off of there but the problem is i cheaped out <laughs> when i built the line for this I used a non-union end so that that end doesn't spin when I crack that loose the whole hose is going to want to spin so that means we got to take the whole hose out and it routes all the way down to the pump down here that has a union fitting on it I'll crack that loose and we're going to try to catch it all in a bucket because it's good I just topped this hydraulic fluid off because uh, it wouldn't even go up anymore I did one job with it and parked it so I don't want to waste all my new fluid. We'll try to save as much as we can. Well, it took a while, but finally got all the fluid bled out of our hoist cylinder here. Now we should be able to go ahead and turn this hose out of the bottom of the cylinder and lift it up and out. Time has also become a factor because there's a storm coming. It's got tigers in it.
There we go, it's finally moving. Good gravy. That took forever. All right, so in the process of trying to beat that thing out of there, of course, I mushroomed it over pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take the torch and just whack that mushroom part off the bolt there. And you can see we're back down to hitting on this uh, cross member. So I'll get the forklift in here again. I gotta disconnect that line still, and then we'll lift this thing up with the forklift. I should be able to get that bolt the rest of the way out of there now. She was a fighter, but in the end, I always prevail. Now we gotta hope that the uh, push rod comes out of that T-bar thing they got going on there. I can hear you saying, but Matt, but Matt, you're going to ruin the chrome. And you're right, I mean, I, I probably will gouge it up a bit, but it's down here past the normal travel length. You can tell by the dirt ring on the chrome, so. Yeah, nothing to worry about down here. Well, the carnival continues. I got that pipe wrench on there with the uh, come along pulling it. And the thought there is to try and, because this will turn. If it was broke free up there, this chrome rod would turn and break loose in that fitting. So I've got a lot of tension on that guy. And then down here now, I've got these uh, couple binders with some pretty darn good tension. I really, I don't like doing this because now we're pulling on the cap, essentially. Uh, I don't like doing that, but I got some tension that way. And so that is... My hope now that with all this tension on that connection, I can go ahead and heat it again quickly and that that thing will expand and let this thing just pop right out of there. Yes, we have separation. <laughs> Moved about an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna go ahead, keep trying to draw this thing off while it's moving. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank heavens. Come on, big pool on there. Oh, it's out. Well, sometimes you just got to do janky things to make things happen. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can tell there. That whole thing is actually magnetized for whatever reason. See all the little pieces of metal standing on end? Huh. I wonder why that would be magnetized. Maybe one of you smarter fellers down there that studied in the sciences can explain that one to me. All I need to know is that this thing is free. 
and we can finally wrap the strap back around it with the forklift and yank it up out of here. All right, well, getting that cylinder out of that hole there was about the only thing that's gone right today. I finally am able to pick it out of there with the forklift. I'll go over to, well, let me rephrase that. I was finally able to snatch the cylinder up out of there after it got caught on everything and was fighting me like crazy. Finally got it picked out of there with the forklift, backed up, forklift found a soft spot in the driveway because it's useless off-road, sunk down, got stuck. And then I go over here to look and the camera battery had died while I was doing all that and you guys didn't even get to see any of it. So, yeah, that's how my day's going. See that thing spiraling out of there? Oh yeah. I've never, I've never seen anything like that before. I've seen them, I just never personally torn one apart. There we go. Is that just lifts up now. Close, it wants to come. So there it is, completely disassembled. I just tossed it in the back of that Jeep here so we can take it to the hydraulic shop. But look at this. You can see somebody has center punched that nut uh, a whole bunch trying to get it to stay put. And they have not done a very good job because it is free willy, free willy moving all about there. Uh, I don't, I'm not a hydraulic specialist by any means, but I've never seen packing like this. And that looks expensive. So yeah, might. I mean it does lift up okay it doesn't bleed down too fast so we might end up just keeping all of this stuff and just get new stuff for the uh, gland seal and all that because that's where it was leaking was out of here so we're gonna take it to the hydraulic shop and see what they say all right so here we go this is our barrel from our cylinder and best I can tell it looks like everything's all good in here see that notch right there lights a bit harsh for you there's a spot ground out right here and I'm no hydraulic expert but what I believe that is is a bypass so when the cylinder comes up instead of hitting the uh, end of the stroke hard that gives the pressure a place to go around the packing so that you uh, you don't wind up blowing out your cylinder or causing other damages but anyway there's minimal scarring down through the bore here everything looks so okay for what it is and you know it didn't bleed down real fast before that was not my issue it was just the fact that it was leaking out of the gland in around the rod that was the big problem so basically we just have to clean this all up real good get all this gook out of the uh, o-rings seat here and we'll wipe the whole thing out as best we can and get ready to reassemble all right just got back from uh, my local hydraulic shop that i use and they were able to match me up some seals that should fit this baby. We got a new O-ring and two new gland seals and we should be ready to get this baby cleaned up and assembled. Oh, luckily, coming off pretty easy.
There we go. And of course, they have to have about the uh, finest thread pitch imaginable on here, so it just takes you 12 years to crank it off of there. Well, that's not good. Actually, upon close inspection here, it looks like our nut has had the threads pretty well rolled over at some point. And I don't really want to put those back in there like that. I need to see if I can get another nut. All right, well, it's a few days later. I got us a nice new grade 8 nut to hold everything together here. And what we're going to do now is yank that off. And this is directional, I do believe, yeah. So you have the indent here where the nut rides on the back side. We'll set that down there. This fancy little spacer collar here. That goes there. Anyways, take that off of there so that we can install our new seals in this guy. Install our new seals in this guy, and we'll slide it over this end of the shaft rather than take it off the top because the top has some uh, marring on it for me trying to get that thing apart. All right, so here's the seals that they gave us. This one, because it's got this big lip here, we know is going to be our uh, dirt wiper here, the wiper seal. That's going to go right there like so. This guy is the one that actually holds the pressure in the cylinder, and it's going to go in the lower ridge here um, with the lip facing in. You're always having the lip facing the pressure. I usually use engine assembly lube whenever I'm putting seals like this in just helps everything kind of click into place a lot easier most of the time and these are some very stiff seals so this is often quite a pain Ooh. I just used the handle of this wire brush because it's uh, blunt and wooden. You want to use a screwdriver because you can easily damage the seal. That looks good. Now the wiper seal should be even easier. There we go. And just like that, we got new seals installed. And hopefully this baby doesn't leak a drop. Now, in our case, this cylinder has a nice rounded edge to it. This should just pop together pretty easy. Sometimes they can be quite a bear. Yeah, look at that. Gotta make sure everything's lubed up good. Nice tight fit. That should be good. That means it shouldn't leak. Now, of course, we just reinstall the spacer and the packing here. Try to keep everything as clean as possible, but you know. We're not building microchips here. It doesn't need to be that crazy. I'm literally hanging off the whole thing right now, so can't do much more than that. Whew. We're going to follow up the same way that they had done in previous times and give it a few good hammer peens with a center punch to lock that nut from backing off. There. 
She ain't going nowhere. All right, now here's the tricky part. This thing's got to compress just like a piston and ring in an engine. And I've got the uh, rings all clocked, just like pistons, or just like piston rings. And I don't have a compressor that's going to go big enough and compress these rings like a piston ring. So, yeah, I guess we're just going to sit it down on here and kind of work it around. I don't think it's going to be that terrible, but it doesn't look fun either. Oh, oh, look at that. That went way easier than expected. I lubed it up really good, so I'm sure that helped a bit. Yeah. Huh? Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Now we got this O-ring we gotta get seated down in here and without some good lubrication we could tear that O-ring. I should have lubed that up before I dropped it in here, but I really didn't think it was gonna go that easy. It's nice when things work out easy. I'm not used to that. Perfect. Guess we're just gonna take our dead blow hammer and try to tap this thing in. There we go. Hot diggity. That went smoothly. I'm impressed. Last thing we had to do is put our locking spring in here, which is this bent piece of metal. It's got a little tit sticking down on one side and it's wedged on the other side so you can slide her in there. To be completely honest, I'm not positive on how we're supposed to do this. I think we start the tit end in first and then spin the top and it'll crank this thing all the way in. I think that's how I took it apart. It's been a week now. Yep. I think that's it. I think that's it right there. That baby's locked together. We're ready to reinstall this thing in the truck. All right, now to make sure that we don't have any trouble with this thing in the future, I'm gonna go ahead and buff this thing out of here, clean that all up so that we, that uh, piston should slide in and out of there. Then we'll put it back together with a bunch of anti-seas. That looks beautiful. Nice and clean in there. Goop a bit of never sees in here so we don't have it. any more issues in the future if we have to take this apart. All right, this part's fun. We're gonna use compressed air to blow that cylinder out and push it into that holder it's supposed to go into. At least that's the, the plan here. Hot diggity.
Yep, that's another project scratched off the list, and boy, am I glad that's done. That's a big relief, and uh, I really need to use the truck. So I got some concrete slabs here. We're going to load those up, and uh, we'll go dump those off, and that'll wrap this thing up. Let's got our cylinder all back together here nice. Everything looks nice and dry down here. You can see around the seals. Those the seals are actually only a little shiny from the uh, assembly lube we used to put this thing together. This thing's all nice and dry. There's no hydraulic oil residue on it. It's beautiful. That's just a few days later here. Had to get rid of some broken chunks of concrete. Our cylinder is nice and dry, baby. Not a drip or a drop. I couldn't be happier with that. Well, guys, I guess that's a wrap. Another uh, project scratched off the list. As always guys, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can stick around and see what else I get into. If you're looking for any sweet Diesel Creek merch, you can get that over at the store. There's a link in the description or just go to dieselcreek.com. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one. Later.